welcome to this week's episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Food and Farmer series. My name is Stephanie Mock and today I'm guest hosting this episode in place of Justine and Matt. I want to thank them for this opportunity. We have two very special guests on today who are participating in our Parade of Farms event happening Saturday, May 6th. And we'll be talking to these guest speakers about their very unique farming operations they have here on Oahu, as well as as well as their participation in this very special agricultural event called Parade of Farms. So first I'd like to introduce our guests. We have Ray DeCoido of Malama Loco AF Fish Pond, and we also have Emma Bello of Sweetland Farm. Thank you so much for joining us today. So I wanted to take a quick moment and just talk about Parade of Farms in general because I think it's a really unique um, opportunity for the community and the farms to integrate and get to know each other a little bit better. So. Parade of Farms is a one-day event happening on Saturday, May 6th, and basically allows the community to take guided behind-the-scenes tours of local farms on Oahu's North Shore. We have eight farms participating this year, and we're very excited to be speaking to two of those farms who are participating in the event. So first, we'd like to talk to Ray. Hello, Ray. Thank you for joining us today. Aloha, Stephanie. Thanks so much for inviting of us. Of course, yes. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your organization, Malama Loco Ea Fish Pond. So if you could tell us what your role is there and basically a quick mission statement and goal of your organization. So I'm the executive director. I've been there just under two years. Um, and the mission of Malama Loco Ea is to restore a 400-year-old fish pond to mm -hmm. full production um, and to bring back culturally appropriate education and sustainable food resources to the community. Wow, and how large is this fish pond? It's 12 acres. Okay. Um, the 12 acres is the property. We have three different fish ponds, and they total about nine acres of actual ponds. Nine acres of actual ponds. Yeah. And so how, how much production that, does that allow you on nine acres? Um, there's different levels um, of intensity that okay. you can grow it at. We choose to be the sustainable traditional method, which is okay. called extensive. And we figure we'll um, be able to harvest probably five to 600 pounds per year per acre. Five to 600 pounds per year per acre times nine acres. Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. And where where does this harvest go to? Does it go to the community? Do you sell it to markets? Is it a, a group effort? What kind of? So we are actually still in the restoration phase. Okay. Um, it's actually a, still a live fish pond, okay. which means it's connected to um, the ocean, Haleiwa Bay. Um, through a makaha, and so that's our chamber or our main ar artery into the fish pond, and it's also our natural recruitment. So okay. we just went through mullet ponding, spawning season, and they come in because they like the brackish water right. and the algae and the conditions. Okay. Um, but our, our depth is too low, which causes other issues, and so we're actually not um, harvesting and selling right now. Okay. So we're actually in the permitting stage, which you know hopefully we'll get through um, that in 2017, and and we hope to be in production in 2018. And I mean we could start doing it, and I think we'll you know probably start um, bartering with some of the other agriculture and distributors in the North Shore. Um, but right now our depths are only two feet, and we need to be to four feet which will change the oxygen levels and the temperature and the ideal conditions for the mullet. And so to get this sustainable harvest, you were talking about restoration efforts and what's needed to bring the pond back to you know, its glory days, if you will. So what can you as an organization as, and also the community do to help restore this fish pond? Uh, well, we've actually been um, given or granted stewardship. Local Ea is actually a 400-year-old fish pond owned by uh, Kamehameha. It's been in the hands of the Ili'i since the beginning of time. Back 400 years ago, it was a food source for the Ili'i, not really the community. Mm -hmm. um, and over the, over the you know, generations, what happens is just natural sedimentation. And really, I mean, it's, everything is, is functioning. A lot of the other fish ponds really have real hardcore issues. We mm -hmm. don't. Ours is just depth, but unfortunately mm -hmm. depth requires dredging and that's the magic D word because you have to go to the Army Corps to get the permits and there's a lot of um, 
there's just a lot of issues and levels of compliance and a lot of things that we have to do with agencies that don't necessarily understand a cultural site the cultural and the types of things that we're doing. And so with just a lot of patience and a lot of love and um, really all we want to do is, it sounds small, but you know, we want to remove 20,000 tons, 20,000 tons of which of is sediment. just two feet of sediment in an eight acre fish pond. Wow. That, that doesn't sound like a small feat. <laughs> but it's considering doable. a it's lot doable. of the things that the other fish ponds had need to get to, you know, full functionality, mm -hmm. that isn't so much. Yes. And so with these restoration efforts, besides the dredging, I know that there's a lot of invasive species. And can you talk a little bit about how the community helps Bokoya Fish Pond in removing and restoring the pond as a, a general community effort? Sure. So. It was really follow from the mid 80s until 2008 when Kamehameha decided to let community back into the fish ponds mm -hmm. and to start stewarding it. And it was at that time some of the regular um, volunteers resonated and they kind of hand pointed two gentlemen, James Astoris and Benson Lee, who subsequently created Malama Loko Ea Foundation, which is the nonprofit that I manage. Um, so in 2000, what they did from 2008 to 2012 really was just um, habitat restoration, removing the invasive grasses um, through the acres. The ponds were, you know, fully covered. They had, you know, they had just been let go for 30, 40 years. Um, and most of that was done manually through volunteer efforts one day a month the third saturday a month um and, and now that happens every month every month third saturday of every month so um everyone yeah. can join you and, and you know it really is it really is a kako thing it really is the community getting back i mean aloha aina is a big movement and you know that's how in traditionally um places like this were managed. Mm -hmm. It was always a community kuleana. Um, and we're starting to see that resurgence of families and locals wanting to get back and restore these precious vahipana sac sacred places. So um, yeah, we have a very, very small staff. We really just manage educational programs and volunteer opportunities, mm -hmm. you know, for people that want to, to get in there. Can you speak a little bit more about the educational opportunities and volunteer yeah. days? Um, well, you know, fish ponds, in addition to being a you know sustainable food resource and a management system, which you know provided food for you know a million people mm -hmm. in the islands before right. the day of navigation or um, Matson containers coming in, um, it's a learning laboratory, and a lot of people learn STEM and other, um, you know, sustainable resource techniques through the type of programs that we conduct. Um, and so we've actually, over the years, since 2012, we've conducted educational programs and mostly, you know, for the um, Department of Education local schools. They'll come out and now we're to the point where we have about 3,000 students that wow. come through every year. And fortunately, we're focused mostly on the local schools like Leilahua and Wailua and Kahuku. And I mean, basically all of the teachers have, have learned that we're here and just love the programs that we put on. And in some cases, like Wailua Elementary, the kindergarten teacher will come out then we'll get them again in third grade, and yeah. then we'll get them again in sixth oh, grade. Fantastic. So they're really able to, you know, grow that connection, and as they grow, um, realize more and more about sustainable food systems and, you know, stewardship, community engagement, all of these important things that they need to know what they can do in their community. Oh, fantastic. And I forgot to mention uh, the location of your fish pond. Would you like to share where you're located so people are able to come out to these volunteer days and help you get it up yeah, to where? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that we've been there. Um, they drive by all the time. It's actually in Haleiwa off of Kalaniane Ole, or Kamehameha Highway, <laughs> sorry. Um, behind the old Jamesons, which mm -hmm. is now Haleiwa Beach Grill. Um, right across the street from Haleiwa Beach. Nice. And so if 
people want to learn more about your foundation and the fish pond, what website can they check out so they can come to these volunteer days or get their school group to come out and learn more yeah. about aquaculture? So we have a really great informative um, website, www.localea.org, which is L-O-K-O-E-A.org. And it says visit, so you can click on the visit. And we like the volunteers to um, RSVP directly online. And our, our next one is actually on Saturday, so that's two days away, and we have plenty of room for you guys. <laughs> and if you're an educator or a business that wants to bring out a community group, there's also our educational menu. So depending on you know what you want to specialize on, focus. Fantastic. And so you were talking a little bit about mullet coming in because they like the brackish water. So imagine that I'm a group who needs an educational presentation. What other species of plants and fish can I find there? And what's good and what's bad in these fish ponds? Uh, well, I mean, it's, local Ea is known for its sweet mullet. Sweet mullet. Um, we have a holy holy, we have oopu. Those are probably the three primary um, tilapia a ways back really has um, been introduced and we want to figure out a way to utilize that and use it as a food source because you know it is invasive um, and it is plentiful mm -hmm. um, it's not our you know it's not our choice of food but we have to kind of learn to work with it okay um, but yeah I mean it's just um, we we really want to focus on the production of mullet since mm -hmm. that's what we traditionally have used and so for us um, brackish water fishes okay. are those specialties. And what is brackish water? So brackish water is the combination. So local air is actually one half of two fish pond systems. So okay. up a mile and a half um, is another fish pond called Ukoa. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a waterways or a tributary in between us, which at this time is still um, filled with it's the California grass, so we need, you know, that's our, that's our longer grass. goal <laughs> is to get that open and restore that connection. The underground um, fresh freshwater springs are still happening. So okay. brackish water is when you have the fresh water meeting with the uh, the ocean water, and that makes a, a sweet sauce that the <laughs> the fish love, and it you know it generates photoplankton and the type of food that that they really enjoy. Wow! And according to stories from the community, really just delicious mullet. Fantastic! Um, well, thank you so much for telling us about the thank organization, you. the fish pond. And you can find more at localea.org, as well as visiting our Parade of Farms event where. Malama Loco Ea Fish Pond will be part of our agriculture tour in the morning, featuring Namea Kupono, a Ikalo, as well as Mohala Farms, a local organic farm. So thank you again for joining us, Ray. I really appreciate it. And thank I you. hope we can learn more about your organization during the Parade of Farms event on Saturday, May 6th. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii Is My Mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Carol Cox. I'm the new host of Eyes on Hawaii. Make sure you stay in the know on Hawaii. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon. We will see you then. Aloha. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! Welcome back, everyone. For those of us who are just joining us, we are. my name is Stephanie Mock, and I am guest hosting for Food and Farmer Series for Think Tech Hawaii this week. I'm joined this week by two guest speakers. We just featured Ray DeCoito from Malama Loco Ea Fish Pond, and next we'll be speaking to Emma Bello, the owner and manager of Sweetland Farm, who will also be part of our Parade of Farms event on Saturday, May 6th. 
So thank you so much for joining us, Emma. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining us. So tell us a little bit about Sweetland Farm, where it's located, and basically what do you produce? We are a family-run goat dairy in central Oahu, okay. and we mainly produce goat cheese. So Chev, which is a spreadable goat cheese, okay. uh, feta, which is brined, and you can like crumble it on salads. Okay. And then we do an aged cheese. It's semi-hard. It's called tome. Okay. So it has a natural rind on the outside. It looks like a piece of stone. <laughs> <laughs> but doesn't taste like it, right? No. Okay. It's very okay. nutty and buttery. It's, it's very nice. Okay. Yes. Wow. And so you just named a bunch of cheeses that I don't personally yes. know. <laughs> so how did you get into cheese making and learning so much about cheese in general? It's not a skill that everyone has no. nowadays. <laughs> Um, it basically started as a summer job at Surfing Goat Dairy on Maui. Okay. I wanted to be a pastry chef. That was my dream. <laughs> and um, I quickly realized that I wanted to be outside with the animals. Um, so I kind of put the cooking aspect in with the animals so, to making cheese. So um, I basically fell in love with goats and got my parents wanted to get back into ag. Okay. And uh, we just went for it. And so you were talking about your parents getting back into ag. So is this a, a family business then? It is. But you're the owner and manager. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. So what's your background in farming? You were mentioning your family's in farming. Is there any sort of, yes. like, did you grow up in a yeah. farm or, you know, work in the farm every mm -hmm. day? What's your background in? My parents, um, my mom's parents um, have Peterson Egg Farm up in Wahiwa in Heights. Wahiwa, yes. And uh, my parents are actually poultry majors okay. from Cal Poly. So I've always grown up with chickens. Okay. Um, not goats. You got sick of the chickens though? <laughs> A when little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and yeah, just, it's, I just love animals. It's in my blood. Yeah. Um, I think I found my calling. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I and just, I so love young aspects. too to find yes. your calling <laughs> in farming. Young farmer. Yes. Yay. Yep. <laughs> Um, so you were talking a little bit about the products that mm -hmm. you produce. Do you produce them on site? Do you rent a commercial kitchen? What, mm -hmm. what kind of operation is that? Everything is produced on site. Fantastic. We don't buy milk. We don't buy curds. Um, it's all from the goats. All from right yeah. on site. Right on site. And so you make all that cheese right on site. Yes. So what kind of equipment do you use um, in cheese making? Do you have to pasteurize? Yeah. What main kind? the main equipment is um, a pasteurizer, okay. which is a vat. We have a 211 gallon vat. Wow. It's kind of the middle size. They go really big and they go smaller. Okay. Um, we have a drain table. Okay. And what is that? So um, the byproduct of cheese making is whey. Okay. So we want the curds and the whey um, basically drips out onto the strain table from either um, a drain bag or a mold. Okay. And um, that byproduct um, goes to pig farms or they can go to your plants, into your garden. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really high in protein. So you see like the powdered shakes in the stores the that you buy. Protein. Yeah, that's just a powdered oh, form of whey. Oh, nice. So um, yeah, I hope to have some pigs on the farm one day and so give the whey to them. You make them nice and fat and yes, happy yes. and strong <laughs> at the same time. Yes. So right now we're showing a picture of you actually making cheese yes. on site. So what are you doing here? What are you making? So I'm making Chev. Um, that's the vat behind me. The 211 Yes. Gallon vat? Okay. Yes. Um, and it's going into um, a cheesecloth bag. It looks like a big pillowcase. And then I tie it off and then um, we'll put it on the drain table, which is um, in front of me also. Mm -hmm. um, and it's there for about two hours, two to five hours, depending on um, what consistency of the shove we want, a okay. softer or a more crumbly shove. And what's your favorite cheese? Because you've listed many different types yes. of cheese. Do you have I'm, a favorite that you produce? I'm really excited about the tome. Oh, and what is that again? It's a semi-hard cheese with a natural rind on it. The stone one that doesn't yes. taste like a stone. The picture of the cheeses, mm -hmm. you'll see the tome on the left-hand side. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And these all these different cheeses that you make, do you sell them to local markets? Like, Who is your main market, would you say? Restaurants and hotels. Okay. We also sell to um, Whole Foods, mm -hmm. all three locations in Hawaii. Okay. 
Yeah, one day, hopefully, the mainland. <laughs> Ooh, big, <laughs> get that big. big ideas and big dreams. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so you, you mentioned your farms in Waialua, so mm -hmm. that's one reason you're part of the Parade of Farms event, because mm -hmm. we wanted to feature mm -hmm. all these amazing farms and operations that are happening mm -hmm. on the North Shore. Um, what is something someone can see when they come out on the farm tour of your farm? You know, how many goats are they going to see? Are they are they only going to see babies or adults? Can they see cheese making? Mm -hmm. What what kind of things can we see on the tour? On Saturday, uh, they'll be able to see um, all 196 goats. Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, they'll be able to see the whole process: the cheese making room, the milking parlor, mm -hmm. where we hold the milk, the barns, mm -hmm. babies, of course. The babies. Yes. Oh, I have nice. 86 right now. You have 86 babies. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and when were they born? Um, a bunch were born in January, in a week, all in a week, about oh my goodness. 50 something. And then. So, um, no, no sleep that week, right? No. No. I was up for 32 hours, Gosh. I believe. Helping them give birth? Mm -hmm. Wow. And then you have to milk the mom, and then you have to feed the babies and make sure everyone's okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I had five going at one time giving birth. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was a busy day. And do you have a team on your farm to help you? Is it a one-woman operation? What, what kind of I team do, do you have? I do nights, but I work every day. So, an so average you work 24 of 12, hours a yeah. day? <laughs> <laughs> I work seven days a week, um, an average of 12 hours a day. Wow. During kidding, it, can, it varies yeah. between 12, 32 hours, yeah. 15 My hours. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah. But it's and a labor of love. I love what I do. Good. So yeah. the pastry chef? kind of morphed into goat farmer yes. and cheese maker yes. and wow you have mm -hmm. a, an amazing operation and I can't wait for people to visit and see your farm. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, so what are what are the next steps for Sweetland Farm? So when did you start the farm and then how do you see it moving into the future? So we've been working on this farm for five years and we're working now we're finishing our last building which has a gift shop Okay. And the tome and then a gouda or howda. Howda. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so that we're going to play around with the howda this year and um, get that going as well. Um, so that building is finishing this year. So hopefully agritourism at the end of the year mm -hmm. or next year, early next year. So you're going to have a full operation on site. You're going to yes. have the goat farm. You're going to have mm -hmm. the retail aspect, the mm -hmm. agritourism aspect. Mm -hmm. And are you, are you doing this for... Um, just diversifying farm operations to um, to en to enlarge the operation as a whole. What, what's your goal in bringing all these different aspects of farming together? I want to educate the students. Really? Okay. That's one of my main goals is to get the schools out to the farm to educate them. Their you know their food doesn't come from the shelves in the store. It comes. Are you sure? I think it just <laughs> grows on the shelf right there. Right? No farms or farmers involved. <laughs> so. I want them to come out, experience, get, you know, get their hands dirty, mm -hmm. uh, play with the goats, just learn yeah. from start to finish, you know, from the goats to the packaging and, and just relate to that. You can be a whole business just with the farm, the yes. whole agribusiness and agritourism yeah. aspect. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So we talked a little bit that you're going to be part of the North Shore Specials Tour, which mm -hmm. also features Twin Bridge Farms and Counterculture. I was hoping you could speak a little bit about how you partner with other farms mm -hmm. or, you know, just today meeting Ray, how mm -hmm. you guys are already creating a barter system, <laughs> cheese for mullet and tilapia. Um, so if you could just talk about, you know, do you have a connection with the mm -hmm. other farmers? Do you, do you rely on, do you give your way to other farmers or get anything in return? How, how does that work within the North Shore farming community as a whole? I have uh, been giving my way to a pig farmer. Okay. But I don't get anything back in return. Not yet, uh, maybe. Not yet, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then again, I want to have my own pigs. Okay. And maybe sell that meat from the farm mm -hmm. or just consume it ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get off the farm very often is the problem right now because I'm so busy. <laughs> I, working 24 hours a day? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. So slowly but surely I will uh, branch out. Well, I think you have a great reputation so far. And Thank people you. always... <laughs> ask me questions about who's that goat farmer on mm -hmm. the North Shore? Mm -hmm. Emma Bello. Um, yeah, so I think that's a, a great mixture of how working with new farms mm -hmm. and 
you were mentioning you don't really get off the farm, and mm -hmm. I know Ray's executive director <laughs> and stewarding a 400-year-old fish pond <laughs> is busy and is being mm -hmm. torn all different ways, and mm -hmm. have, you, you guys have to wear multiple hats, you know? Mm -hmm. You're always businesswoman, farmer, yep. I'm birthing goats at 2 a.m., <laughs> yep. you know, that exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. And so there isn't that, there's only so much time in the day, and so people don't always get to see the farmers face to face. And mm -hmm. so with Parade of Farms, we thought if we can't get the farmers <laughs> off the farms, <laughs> let's bring the public to them, right? We can get them all in one spot. And that educational aspect that you're talking about, just seeing where your food comes mm -hmm. from and also just be yeah. a great day out in the field. Mm -hmm. You experience your farm every single day, and so probably after a while, it's like another goat, you know, <laughs> making more cheese. But for, for us outsiders, it's an amazing process, and we, and we love seeing how hard you guys work and mm -hmm. how you manage your natural resources sustainably as well. So you can provide these community services through education, through agritourism, through delicious product. I can't wait to try the sweet mullet, by the way. That's my, that's my goal. I'm thinking of of Sweet different mullet. ways that we can partner. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she said echo tours, and um, that's something that we definitely want to start conducting. Mm -hmm. You know, just taking our educational program and modifying it for mm -hmm. the visitor or, you know, the adult family. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And we think, you know, Holly Eva is just so packed with packed, that yeah. visitor industry and for a nonprofit to start finding ways to mm -hmm. fund itself. Yeah. Uh, fish, fish pond production or fish production is not a lucrative it's a labor of love um, it's high labor cost yes and so break even is where we want to be okay. so we have to find other production models right. and I'd love to you could talk start your own you. retail outlet and feature Sweetland farm cheeses there well, there's, with your there's sweet just a lot of partners <laughs> and we just need to get out there and talk to each other and find the similarities in the way that we can align with each other for sure yeah I mean we have huge educational programs already so mm -hmm. yeah. we can share our teachers with you definitely wow. <laughs> well I want to thank you guys both for coming on today I loved hearing about your operations and I know the audience did too um, you can learn more about Parade of Farms at parade-of-farms.org where we will be featuring farms and agribusinesses of the North Shore community on Oahu such as Malama Loco Ea Fish Pond and Sweetland Farm who are just two of m one of the many farms who are being part of our tours that day, happening on Saturday, May 6th. So again, we'd love to thank you for tuning in to this guest-hosted episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Food and Farmer series, and we want to hope to see you all in the next episode, where we can talk to more farmers about food and farms in general. Thank you. <laughs>